bike manufacturers want to make life easy for themselves. And so despite the incredible variety of types and shapes of humans, they will generally assume you are 178 centimetres and 80 kilograms. Or if you live in a backward country stuck in the imperial past, that's 5 foot 10 and 176 pounds. Jeez, get with the program you colonial types. And of course, the manufacturers are automatically assuming you are a guy. God forbid a woman should ride a motorbike. If you are into chasing specific tips on bike setup and riding style for short and tall riders, we've done it. Just use the links to the vids at the end of this vid. In the meantime, let's meet Rob, a bloke I met while in Canada. Based in Ontario, he's a beta dealer mechanic and experienced suspension tuner who knows all about air dabbing and tip overs. But on the positive side, his power to weight ratio is through the roof. Rob has done all the usual mods, custom lowering, shorter kickstand, softer springs, cut down seat, raised foot pegs, low bend bars set to the rear. And of course he adapts his riding style to suit. We cover riding tips for pint-sized riders in the link at the end of the vid. I've ridden with plenty of short guys and we tall freaks of nature don't really understand how tough it can be in rough terrain. Committing yourself and knowing you probably won't get a foot down to save the bike when it all goes pear-shaped. Speaking of tall freaks of nature, this is Dallas, my evil twin brother and editor of a dirt bike magazine so trashy it makes my videos look good in comparison. A man cannot be judged by the size of his penis or personal assets. Dallas is a former professional basketball player and if only he had some of that talent on a dirt bike. Huh. He says it's great being able to flat foot in any sort of terrain but he's constantly in danger of decapitating himself on tree branches and struggles to fold himself into the tiny cockpit of your typical dirt bike. So he's got those cool fast way foot pegs in the low boy position, high bend bars, rocks risers, firmer suspension and a tall hard seat. He says it ain't perfect but a big improvement. And on the plus side, no one will ever want to ride his bike. I'm a tall freak and can barely touch the ground on his modified FD450. All of this raises an interesting question. When so many of us don't fit the norm, are the manufacturers missing out on increased sales here? As an example, a lot of shorter riders were very excited about the KTM free ride when it came out. Now look, some guys loved it, but many were disappointed that it was just a bit too much like a trials bike and a bit too soft for any sort of serious dirt riding. Then the Beta Cross Trainer came out and it's met with rave reviews from most although most say the suspension does need beefing up for serious enduro riding. So would there be a market for say a three quarter size serious enduro bike? That really kicked ass. Who knows? And then for us tall freaks, what if there was an enduro model that had a longer wheelbase, taller seat and larger cockpit from using a bigger frame? so that we could fold our gangly limbs into it. Personally speaking, it would be so good to feel as if I was part of the bike and just not perched on top of a little toy designed for your average human. Currently, the closest thing to this sort of setup is a kit you can get from Too Tall Racing. It raises the bike and lengthens the subframe, but currently only for KTMs and Husqvarna's. Dallas and I are even thinking about changing teams just to access this kit. But the ideal would be a serious enduro bike manufactured for us long streaks of misery. Would it be economically viable? Well, nobody seems to be taking the risk yet. And yet when you look at the success of the Beta Cross Trainer for shorter riders to date, you would think there must be some kind of market there. Anyway, 
All of this is just first world problems. We aren't having our family members killed in Syria. We aren't starving in a third world nation or being tortured for our political beliefs, although no doubt some of us should be. Check out this cool article about Rob and Dallas if you are literate and know how a magazine works. And now I'll leave you with our extremely dodgy bike setup and riding tips for both the short asses and the long tall freaks. Cheers.